When it comes to Adventures of Chris, the saying, don't judge a book by its cover comes to mind. It's funny because judging it by its appearance is what led to me buying and deciding to play this game. It also helps that over the last 6 weeks or so I've decided to try to play 2 games at once in order to have more videos from my channel, but also simply to get more gaming in, and to try to put a dent in my backlog. The fact that this is an indie game that didn't appear to be very long was a cherry on top. At the end of the day, what matters most isn't what a game can be classified as or how long it is, but whether or not it appeals to me, and whether or not I find it fun. There is a catch to that though. Seeing as how I review games and attempt to do so every 3-5 to five weeks or so, there are games that I've been wanting to play for a while, but due to their length and guesstimates as to how long it takes me to beat them, it's easy to just leave them aside in favor of games that are say 5-30 to 30 hours long. I realize I've gone on a bit of a tangent, but the point is to set up what led me to Adventures of Chris in the first place. You could say that it's easy for something to catch my attention, so I don't have to see much about a game prior to deciding to buy and ultimately play it. In some ways that's good, but in other ways that's bad. I wouldn't say that it's bad like stubbing your toe into a piece of furniture, but first impressions aren't always what they initially seem to be, and when it comes to Adventures of Chris, that's good. At first, I assumed that this would be a casual game with great art direction that I could play every once in a while as a sort of side game. The idea being that I'd have one main game to play when I'm playing my desktop PC in my room and I have another that's less time slash resource consuming that's just right for my mid-tier gaming laptop. For the majority of the game, that's what Adventures of Chris had to offer, and that might turn some away, seeing as how there are some gamers out there that turn away from games that are categorized as casual, but in my case, it's what kept me coming back. It's because it was easy to relax while playing this game and not feeling as if I had to deliver during each play session. If I had to compare it to another game, I'd say it's like a kid-friendly version of Cuphead, at least difficulty-wise. I know that Cuphead has difficulty settings and you can play it at whichever setting you want, but in order to really beat the game, you have to be able to overcome challenges most people just don't want to deal with. Adventures of Chris also has different difficulty settings, but I went with the recommended setting, so that's what my general thoughts and opinions will generally be based on. From the start, I was actually feeling impatient with Adventures of Chris. The first 20 minutes or so were very story heavy and all I wanted to do was play. I realized that the point is to introduce you to what'll generally be going on, but I thought it could have been handled in a better way. I realize it's a bit of a stretch here, but it reminds me of when people say, X game is great after 5-10 to 10 hours. With Adventures of Chris it was more like 20 minutes, and maybe I'm just too eager to be knee deep in a game right from the start, but can you blame me? Seeing as how this is a 2D platformer, how the characters movements feel and overall mobility is of great importance. I'm not entirely sure if this decision was based on Chris being noticeably overweight, but I thought it was nice that you jumped and he felt heavy. I realize that's a small detail to bring up, but it's because when this is approached in a different manner, it leads to the game feeling off. It'll not only feel off, but if this ends up being handled too badly, it could greatly affect the gameplay. If I have to sum up what the majority of this review will discuss, it's the fact that it manages to be towards the middle of casual and hardcore. There definitely are large chunks of this game that could be enjoyed by people new to gaming or young children, but as someone that's been playing video games for nearly 30 years, I didn't mind that too much because I was still having fun. If anything, the drastic jump in difficulty caught me off guard, but that's something I'll discuss at a later point. I'm sure that Adventures of Chris isn't the first 2D platformer to have a gimmick that makes it stand out from one of the many, many other platformers that have been released over the years, but I still enjoyed the fact that a great deal of the gameplay revolved around Chris being able to inflate into a balloon. At first, this ability was pretty standard, but the further you progressed, the more complex it became. An example of this was when you'd inhale different colored gases and they'd affect how quickly or slowly you inflated or deflated. This combined with dangerous obstacles in certain levels made it so that maneuvering through some areas was a challenge. Prior to getting to that point, I enjoyed seeing how different abilities were slowly added to what could be seen as the basic ability, inflating into a balloon. In particular, I thought that being able to combine the balloon form with a sword was amusing. It was mainly due to the visual of seeing a balloon-shaped character struggling to swing a sword around. In general, a lot of humor came as a result of how playing as a balloon-shaped character was utilized. I'm sure that I'm not alone in saying something like this, but I thought that some of the death animations were funny because of how over the top they came off. It reminded me of the modern Tomb Raider games because even if some of those death animations were gory, they seemed so outrageous that it was hard not to look. That's pretty much a long way of saying that I thought that the laser obstacles and some of the levels being able to instantly pop you when you were in balloon form was great. Even if I have a lot of games to compare with, I still end up being surprised every once in a while. What I mean is that this game ended up being longer than I thought it'd be. 
I assumed it'd be around 5 hours long and that gathering up the transformed kids would lead to the end of the game. You could say that it's a good thing that things didn't turn out that way, but when I started to get the feeling that there'd be more to the game despite its teasing that the end was near, that bugged me a little. If anything, it's good that as the game progressed, it had new ways of challenging you or changing things up. Up until the Great Barrier Reef level, all of the previous levels involved side-scrolling from left to right. At the start of the Great Barrier Reef had changed things up and it wasn't a side-scrolling level, and that was a nice surprise. I expected the rest of the level to be like that, but before long it reverted back to being like the other levels. In the end, it was nice that the Great Barrier Reef was different due to how it combined new and old elements. What really caught me off guard was how Adventures of Chris jumped in difficulty when I least expected it. You could say that I was too comfortable with the game coming off as something closer to casual than hardcore, so when I noticed that Egypt really tested your maneuvering skills, I knew I couldn't keep underestimating the game. Despite having to get used to this new difficulty level, I liked how Egypt forced you to combine what you learned throughout the game. It doesn't literally say, take everything you've practiced and put it to use, but it might as well have. This isn't groundbreaking, but it's nice when games, or any other medium in general builds up on what was utilized earlier on. It's because a lot of games, movies, books, and anything else you want to include wants to keep you on your toes by tossing new things at you that it ends up overlooking what was initially introduced or straight up forgetting about earlier elements. What I'm saying is that I appreciate it when the creator of something respects not only their creation, but the intelligence of their audience. As I've already mentioned, Adventures of Chris got hard when I least expected it. This was definitely seen with some of the levels that required decent understanding of the game's mechanics and the character's abilities, but it was more evident with the endgame bosses. I'm sure that I can go through my gameplay footage and count, but seeing as how I'd rather not do that, I have no idea how many attempts it took me to finally beat the final boss, the Kid Vampire. I don't think it's wrong of a game to crank up the difficulty, but if anything, it'd be more appropriate to do that at a decent pace rather than hastily. That makes me wonder how the game would be on higher difficulty settings. Would the difficulty be better spread out over the game, or would it approach things in the same way as in the recommended difficulty setting? I'm sure that a more thorough reviewer that has more time on their hands would go about proving if that's true or not, but I'd rather move on to the next game. Earlier on, I said that Adventures of Chris took up way too much time in the beginning with how it introduced its story, but towards the end, I liked how it all came together. It's probably incredibly nerdy of me to bring up anime when discussing something that's unrelated to anime, but seeing as how I'm a giant weeb, it's easy for me to see connections that may not come to mind for others. I jokingly tweeted that the moral of the story was a well-known quote from the anime Tengen Toppen Gurren Lagann, Believe in the me that believes in you. That came to mind because the message of the story ended up being a big part of the game. From the beginning, it's clear that Chris being overweight is something that bothers him. He's not all woe is me about it, but his comments make it clear that he has his own way of dealing with this. The game ends with Chris coming to the conclusion that if he was able to overcome a difficult journey like the one he just finished having, middle school would be no problem. It's not explicitly said, but the moral of the story reminded me of a saying that I'm sure to be butchering. Courage isn't the absence of fear, but feeling fear and overcoming it anyway. It's ultimately up to you and your taste that determine whether or not Adventures of Chris had a good story to tell, but I was satisfied with it. Adventures of Chris makes me think that it's the kind of game for players that want more of something they already know that they enjoy. I initially bought this game because of its art direction, but chances are that someone that really loves platformers would discover it via that route. I'm definitely someone that appreciates platformers, but knowing how diehard some platformer fans can be, I wouldn't feel comfortable putting myself on the same level of fandom as them. What's worth noting about Adventures of Chris is that at times it led me away from other games that I was playing. You could say that it's because I enjoyed it that much, but it was more due to the fact that I enjoyed the general vibe it gave off. It wasn't as intense of an experience as say a Soulsborne game, so it was easy for me to relax for the majority of the game. In the eyes of some, Adventures of Chris is just another indie game in the endless field of indie games that are out there, but it's worth giving it a try because it's clear that this was a passion project. If you enjoyed this content, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share. Thank you very much for watching.